Uh, there's some order modifiers that uh, exist in QAD, and here's a uh, picture of the uh, planning uh, data that we'll talk about. The discrete lot size, the fixed order quantity, and we talked about EOQ last week. There's a period order quantity, and then there's a whole series of these uh, order mo modifiers, and we'll look at uh, how those will uh, take place. So here you can see that uh, we've got an armrest and an arm assembly. We've got a lead time of one week. We've got uh, on hand of 50 and 10, a uh, lot size of 25. Our period order quantity is four, and a minimum order quantity is 25 and 60. So if you uh, if you look at the requirements for this arm assembly, and recognizing we have a scheduled receipt of 50 in period three, you can go ahead and look at the calculation of the release and the due date of that armrest assembly, such that we finally arrive at our uh, projected on hand. Now we're going to drive that down into the armrest based on the product structure. And again, now we can uh, look at the order modifiers. We saw that there's a period order quantity of four. So MRP is going to go out and it's going to look at the four periods out the future and accumulate those into a planned order. It's going to offset the planned order release. That's going to come in, and we're going to go out and project another negative 50 out in period eight. That is going to look at the next four periods again, offset it by one, and, and we'll have 10 available. So those order policy modifiers uh, allow the planner to schedule either in terms of lot for lot, the EOQ we looked at last week, or these period order quantities. There's what are called uncashed requisitions, allocations. Allocations exist for shop orders that are released but have not been actually taken to the warehouse to have picked. Uh, MRP allocates or handles allocations as an additional gross requirement for the allocated item. And you can see here, you can see uncashed uh, or allocations in QAD in the menu 13.8. There are also uh, a number of uh, utilities that QAD gives you to help manage those allocations. Sometimes uh, allocations get hung up, so you can uh, look at the LDD or the uh, LADD uh, tables and clean up those uh, allocations. We talked about safety stock last week. Safety stock uh, is used to guard against demand. And the recommendation for safety stock in an MRP environment is that you use MR or safety stock at the highest levels of the build material or the lowest levels of the build material. If you use safety stock at the intermediate, intermediate levels of build material, you can cause QAD to carry dead inventory and can uh, have MRP expedite when it's not needed, de-expedite, and that tends to lose credibility in MRP. And then you fall back on spreadsheets, which is never a, a good idea. Uh, there's a yield factor in uh, QAD, and this is the ratio of uh, unusable or usable output from a process relative to its input. So if you fill in in 1.4.7 or 1.4.17 a yield factor, you can see that uh, QED is going to add a what's referred to as a scrap factor in the MRP for every planned order. If we look at that in terms of, uh, we can see that this scrap factor of 10% says that uh, you're going to add 10% to the bill material for that, and you're going to go through that same netting process. And then at the arm list level, we're going to see those planned order releases 
drive down as gross requirements into that component. There's a scrap factor also in uh, QAD's MRP, and this is on the bill of material parent co component relationship. And this is a component that is wasted during the assembly of the parent. If you look at uh, this again, you can see that on that scrap factor. Now, if I calculate that, you can see that the planned order release is different by uh, those quantities from the yield factor calculation down to 12, 112, and 112. 